Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is conservation of forest ecosystems. The main objectives of this lecture are forests and their significance, major functions and uses of forest ecosystem, role of government in forest conservation, approaches to forest conservation, key international policy processes relating to forest conservation. First let us discuss forests and their significance. There are over 800 definitions of forests that are used around the world and it is not necessary that an area has to be populated with trees for it to be deemed as a forest and in some cases an area can be legally designated as a forest regardless of the type of local vegetation. The forest ecosystem includes a complex assemblage of different kinds of biotic communities. Optimum conditions such as temperature and ground moisture are responsible for the establishment of forest communities. A forest ecosystem consists of thousands of species. Conserving forest biodiversity depends on protecting complete ecosystem that contain the full complement of their associated flora and fauna. The nature of soil, climate and local topography determine the distribution of trees and their abundance in the forest vegetation. Forests may be evergreen or deciduous, they are distinguished on the basis of leaf intersection, broad leafed or needle leafed coniferous forests in the case of temperate areas. 11 places in the world will account for over 80 percent of forest loss globally by 2030 according to research released by WWF. The Forest ecosystems have been classified into three major categories, coniferous forest, temperate forest and tropical forest. All these forest biomes are generally arranged on a gradient from north to south latitude or from high to lower altitude. Overall, forests are the natural habitat of large scale wildlife growth of trees, shrubs and different variety of plants which unfortunately are dwindling every year. Hence, conservation of forest is an important responsibility that all of us have to undertake. An explicit framework and a set of guidelines for selecting and conserving forest sites as course filters for forest biodiversity focuses on number first size which is defined as the area needed to accommodate natural dynamics and provide sufficient breeding area for multiple pairs of forest interior species. Number second condition which can be defined as the quantity of biological legacies and the amount of non-fragmented interior forest needed to ensure resilience and number third landscape context which can be defined as the amount and configuration of managed forest cover to maintain regional scale properties and to buffer and connect key reserve areas. Now the major functions and uses of forest ecosystems. The forest resources are valuable as an integral part of the ecosystem from the commercial point of view and as providers of shelter to wildlife. Today 
forests provide the raw materials for over 5000 products which is worth about 23 million dollars they support industry which employs 1.3 million people in fact forests are still the natural habitats of several species of plants and animals as well as of several tribal groups of the world but the most unfortunate setback came in the form of commercial exploitation which resulted in mass destruction of forest cover year after year originally over 2/5 of the land area of the earth exclusive of the polar regions or about 1200 million hectares was covered with natural forests but now more than one third of this area has been robbed by man of its natural protective cover and has been turned into barren land which is due to number first increase in temperature number second lesser precipitation number third increased rate of soil erosion number 4 increase in frequency and volume of floods number 5 loss of soil productivity number 6 extinction of several species number 7 non availability of several essential forest products and number 8 imbalance in ecosystem the harmful effects of deforestation are so much that all over the world people and authorities have realized that forest resources must be conserved properly in order to protect the ecosystem the forest is a national resource and a social asset it yields a great social profit which lies wholly outside the realm of business but at present most of the forests of the world are so over used that experts predict dire calamities in the not too distant future and irreparable damage on a catastrophic scale if properly used and put on a sustained yield basis it will be one of man's greatest resources and for this conservation of forest is the only alternative the forest can be managed in such a way that a timber crop may be harvested indefinitely year after year without being depleted this technique is called the sustained yield method adopted by many countries now the control over forest fire destruction or loss of forest by fire is fairly common because trees are highly exposed to fire and once started it becomes difficult to control sometimes the fire starts by natural processes that is by lightning or by friction between trees during speedy winds while in most cases it is also by man either intentionally or unintentionally throughout the world forest fire is common and in most cases they were begun by man as john t guthrie former fire inspector of us forest services has written to stage a forest fire you need only few things a forest the right atmospheric conditions and a spark either from a lightning bolt or a match in the hands of a fool or a knave the formula is simple the larger the forest the drier the air the bigger the fool the bigger the fire you will have in order to save forests from fire it is necessary to adopt latest techniques of fire fighting some of the fire suppression techniques or to develop 3 meter wide fire lanes around the periphery of the fire backfires arrangement of water spray and fire retardant chemicals should be sprayed from back tank and if possible by helicopters their 
must be trained staff or firefighters to control the fire. Now, the reforestation and afforestation. The sustained yield concept dictates that whenever timber is removed either by block cutting or by selective cutting, the denuded area must be reforested. This may be done by natural or artificial methods. Similarly, any forested land which has been destroyed by fire or mining activities should be reforested. In rugged terrain, aerial seeding is the method of choice. Besides all this, fresh afforestation programs should be started. For afforestation, selection of trees should be done according to local geographical conditions and care must be taken during initial growth of the trees. Now, the check over forestry clearance for agricultural and habitational purposes. Most of the present day agricultural land was once forested and then cleared for the use of agriculture. But now, it has reached the stage where further clearance will be dangerous for the entire ecosystem. There are tribals in some parts of Asia, Africa and South America where shifting cultivation is still a part of their system of land procurement. According to an estimate, about 40 million square kilometer of land is used for this purpose by 200 million tribals of the world. For the conservation of forest, this should be checked and an alternative method should be devised. Similarly, for the development of villages, towns and cities, forest lands have been cleared and this process continues to this day, causing loss of forest cover. This also should be checked and green belts around cities must be developed. Now, the protection of the foresters. The existing foresters should be protected. Apart from commercial cutting, unorganized grazing is also one of the reasons. There are several forest diseases resulting from parasitic fungi, rusts, viruses and nematodes which cause the destruction of trees. The foresters should be protected either by use of chemical spray, antibiotics or by development of disease resistant strains of trees. Now, how can we utilize forest and forest products properly? Generally, trees are cut for logs and the rest including stump, limbs, branches and foliage etc. is left out as worthless debris. Further, waste occurs at the sawmills. There is thus need to utilize this waste material. Today, several uses have been developed and products like waterproof glues extra can be obtained. Similarly, forests can be used or developed as tourist centers. By using them as tourist centers, the country can earn substantial foreign exchange. This practice has been adopted by many countries, both developed and developing. The concepts of national park and game century have now become popular and every country has developed its unique forest area as a national park. This is a good method of forest conservation. Now, the role of government in forest conservation. Although the government of every country is very particular about conservation of its forest resources and has served rules and laws for the protection of forests, but they are not implemented in an effective manner. Both national and provincial governments can take some steps in this direction, such as passing acts for the conservation of forests, survey of the forest resources, categorization of forest areas and proper delimitation of reserved forest areas, 
find out the areas where reforestation can be done and regulate the commercial use of forestry products, protect the forest from fire, mining and other natural calamities, develop national parks, encourage foresters developmental activities like forestry, agroforestry, etc. and prepare master plans both for long term and short term period. Now, the forest management Management of forestry resources is the key to all conservation efforts. In forest management, these aspects should be taken into consideration. Number 1, survey of forest. Second, categorization of forests. Third, economic use of forest. Four, administrative setting for forest management. Five, training programs for persons engaged in forest conservation activities. Number 6, use of forest land as tourist centers. 7, social and agroforestry. 8, development of new techniques for the conservation of forests. 9, research for efficient use and conservation of forest. And number 10, policy decisions and their proper implementation. In brief, conservation of forest resources can be done by cooperative efforts of the government, non-government organizations and the public through a proper management system. Now, regulated and planned cutting of trees. One of the main reasons of deforestation is commercial felling of trees by clear cutting, selective cutting, sheltered wood cutting. The forest can be managed in such a way that a timber crop may be harvested indefinitely year after year without being depleted. This technique is called the sustained yield method adopted by many countries of the world. Now, approaches to forest conservation. There are three main approaches. Protection which can be done through designation and management of some form of protected areas. Then sustained forest management, which involves sustainable harvesting of forest products to provide a source of financial income and restoration or rehabilitation. The choice of which approach to adopt will be governed by local socio-economic, political and ecological circumstances. These approaches are not mutually exclusive. A forest management plan might potentially incorporate elements of all three. Now, let us discuss protected areas. The development of protected area network is widely recognized to be the most important approach for conservation. IUCN has developed a classification system for protected areas in 1994 that is widely used. Strict nature reserve, national park, natural monument species management area, protected landscape, managed resource protected area. Now, the effective forest conservation. Forest cover are of central importance to forest conservation and management planning. Conservation management is a complex social, economic and political process requiring recognition of the values held by different people and an ability to identify the trade-offs and compromises that need to be addressed in reaching a practical solution. Now, let us discuss sustainable forest management. Sustainable forest management has been the central issue in international forest policy since the statement of forest principles and chapter 11 of agenda 21, which were formulated at the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. The 
forest principles aim to contribute to the management, conservation and sustainable development of foresters and note the need for setting relevant standards for forest use. Sustainability concepts have in fact been recognized by foresters for at least 200 years. Sustainable use of tree species. Sustainable forest management considers the impact of tree harvesting on the entire forest ecosystem. It is also useful to consider the impact of harvesting on the population dynamics of the individual tree species concerned. It should not be assumed that all species sourced from a forest certified as sustainable managed are necessary themselves sustainably harvested. Now forest restoration. Forest restoration refers to the process of assisting the recovery of a forest ecosystem that has been degraded, damaged or destroyed. This may involve the re-establishment of the characteristics of a forest ecosystem such as composition, structure and function which were prevalent before its degradation. Now the adaptive management which can be defined as the integration of design, management and monitoring to systematically test assumptions in order to adapt and learn. It also offers a method by which research can be incorporated into conservation action that involves testing assumptions, adaptation, learning. Now assessing threats and vulnerability. The effective conservation depends strongly on a full appreciation of the causes of biodiversity loss. Different types of threat may be identified. Direct threats which are those threats that are directly responsible for loss or degradation of foresters or their associated biodiversity and indirect threats are the underlying causes of such direct threats. Monitoring which is the process of periodically collecting and using data to inform management decisions. Monitoring is a critically important aspect of any conservation project to help ensure that management interventions are effective. Indicators. Indicators are surrogates for properties or responses of a system that is too difficult or costly to measure in its entirely. Indicators can be derived from measurements of ecological features either by field survey or by using remote sensing data. The scenarios Conservation actions are generally based upon some expectation about what might happen in the future. Peterson in 2003 described scenario planning as consisting of six interacting stages. Number one, identification of a focal issue or problem. Number second, assessment. Number third, identification of alternatives. Number four, building scenarios, number 5 testing scenarios and number 6 policy screening. Now how can we conserve forests through laws in India? National Forest Policy 1952 enunciated that one third of the geographic area of the country should be under foresters. However, there had been continuous deforestation in the country for various reasons. Within a view to conserve foresters, Government of India enacted the Forest Conservation Act 1980. This act was enacted with a view to checking indiscriminate de-reservation and diversion of forest land to non-forest purposes. Now let us discuss the sustainable forest management and forest conservation methods. Sustainable forest management is the management of foresters according to the principles of sustainable development. 
sustainable forest management uses very broad social, economic and environmental goals. There appears to be a growing international consensus on the key elements of sustainable forest management. Seven common thematic areas of sustainable forest management have been emerged based on the criteria of nine ongoing regional and international criteria and indicators initiatives. The seven thematic areas are number one extent of forest resources, second biological diversity, third forest health and vitality, four protective functions and forest resources, five protective functions of forest resources, six socio-economic functions, seven legal policy and institutional framework. Now the key international policy processes relating to forest conservation, IUCN program on protected areas, UNEP, World Conservation Monitoring Center, World Commission on Protected Areas and World Bank Alliance, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, International Tropical Timber Organization, Center for International Forestry Research, Forest Certification Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification Schemes, Forest Stewardship Council, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Forest Principles and Chapter 11 of Agenda 21, the United Nations Forum on Forests and International C&I. This was all about today's topic. Hope you have enjoyed it well. Thank you for watching.